Hey there folks and welcome back. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to evaluate triple integrals in a brand new coordinate system, cylindrical coordinates. To motivate the idea here, think back to our lessons on double integrals. If I asked you to evaluate a double integral over some region R that had circular boundary components, what would you do? Well, chances are you would convert to polar coordinates because regions with circular boundaries are often much easier to describe in this system than in Cartesian coordinates. Circles in Cartesian coordinates can be a real pain in the butt. Perhaps not surprisingly, if we're trying to compute a triple integral throughout a 3D solid with circular symmetry, it might be difficult to do this if we limit ourselves to just Cartesian coordinates. For example, if we're trying to integrate throughout a cylinder, throughout a cone, or throughout a sphere, you can see that in each case we have a circular component that we're going to have to deal with. And it's going to be a lot easier to handle these circular components if we can describe them in terms of rho and phi. In fact, you can see this in the equations of these surfaces below. In each case, there's some evidence that polar coordinates, or something like polar coordinates, will help to simplify the description of our region. So our goal for this lesson is clear. We want to take everything that we know and love about polar coordinates, which is really a two-dimensional coordinate system, and translate it to a coordinate system that we can use in three dimensions. We're going to call this new coordinate system cylindrical coordinates. Well, with that kind of a buildup, you're probably thinking, wow, cylindrical coordinates. What is this mysterious new coordinate system? It's probably something like I've never seen before. Turns out you couldn't be farther from the truth. Like I said, we're going to take everything we know and love about polar coordinates and pull them up to R3, but we do so with minimal changes. Let me show you just how minimal I mean. Let's suppose that we start with a point x, y, z in Cartesian coordinates. To define the cylindrical coordinates of this point, we're going to start by plopping it down into the x, y plane. We project it down to get the point x, y, 0. Now since x, y, 0 lies in the x, y plane, we can specify its location if we know the polar coordinates of x, y. Right? We can define rho to be the distance from this point to the origin, and we can define phi to be the angle this line segment makes with the positive x-axis. If we know rho and phi, we know the location of this projected point. Of course, rho and phi alone don't tell us anything about the height of our original point, so we still keep our z component. The cylindrical coordinates of our original point are rho, phi, z. Knowing these three pieces of information is enough to determine the location of our point. And that's it, folks. You can see that cylindrical coordinates really is just a knockoff of polar coordinates. As a super quick example, if you wanted to convert the point x, y, z equals 1, 1, 1 from Cartesian to cylindrical coordinates, well, you could start with the z value. The z value doesn't change system to system, so z is 1. For rho and phi, you'd need to find the polar coordinates of the point 1, 1. I'll let you show that rho is root 2 and phi is pi over 4. In fact, since cylindrical and polar coordinates are so closely linked, we have many of the same conversion formulas from Cartesian coordinates. We can write x equals rho cos phi, y equals rho sine phi, and z equals z. z doesn't change. Going the other way, we can write rho equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, tan phi equals y over x, these are our formulas from polar coordinates, and of course z equals z, it remains the same. As an exercise, go back to the last slide and have another look at the equations of the cylinder, cone, and sphere. See how these equations clean up when you convert them from Cartesian to cylindrical coordinates. Our motivation for defining cylindrical coordinates was in making our lives easier when evaluating certain triple integrals. This begs the question, how do you actually convert a triple integral in Cartesian coordinates to a triple integral in cylindrical coordinates? Well, the first thing we would have to do is get rid of these x, y, and z terms. We're going to replace them with their expressions in terms of rho, phi, and z. So x is going to become rho cos phi, y is going to become rho sine phi, and z doesn't change. In addition to converting our x, y's, and z's, we also have to be careful about this volume factor, dv. Remember, when we learned about double integrals, we saw that our area factor, dA, can get a little bit warped when we switch coordinate systems. To account for that deformation in area, we looked at the Jacobian, right? 
Well, the same is going to be true here. Our volume factor can get a little bit warped when we switch from Cartesian to cylindrical coordinates. So to account for the deformation, we look at the Jacobian. Only now, our Jacobian is given by the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. That's the only difference. So we're going to look at the Jacobian, partial x, y, z by partial rho phi z. This is the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix that I get by differentiating these expressions with respect to rho, phi, and z. So in the first column, I'm going to take derivatives of x, y, and z with respect to rho. I get cos phi, sine phi, and since there's no rho present here, my final derivative is 0. In the second column, we take derivatives with respect to phi. I get minus rho sine phi, rho cos phi, and again, my final entry is 0. Finally, I take derivatives with respect to z. There are no z's here, right? So my first two entries are 0, and the final entry is 1. To evaluate this determinant, I'm going to expand about the last column. I have 1 times the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix in the top left. So that's the determinant of cos phi, sine phi, minus rho sine phi, rho cos phi. We multiply the cross terms and take the difference to get rho cos squared phi plus rho sine squared phi. Of course, cos squared phi plus sine squared phi will be 1, giving us a final answer of rho. Ah, now you may remember that rho was exactly our distortion factor when we converted to polar coordinates. And perhaps this isn't surprising. Polar coordinates and cylindrical coordinates are essentially the same thing. They're just taking place in different dimensions. So to wrap up this integral conversion, we add in our volume factor. Rho dz d rho d phi. Now you may be wondering about the order here. Is it always dz d rho d phi? Well, it doesn't have to be in this order, but in almost all practical applications, this is the order you're going to want. 